Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the second uh, Thursday Marek Madness um, of the year. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you've just stumbled upon us, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, Marek Madness is a, a tournament that we put on through Rec Poker, and we'll get into a little bit of that um, shortly and what what's, what you're all in store for and what's already happened and where we're going there. But uh, first, I want to welcome uh, my co-host tonight, Tim Fritz. Uh, how you doing, man? Great, great. Excited. Yeah. Heads up matches. Grueling. Yeah. Grueling no, fun. Is, this, is, this, is, this is a really good stuff. So um, if you tuned in last year, we had Marek Madness. We had eight uh, people competing, um, and we kind of crowned a champion at the end. Uh, last year, our own Taylor Moss, who has also helped produce uh this whole marek madness uh thing for us uh one last year so uh congrats to him last year but also uh, many thanks for him for all the work he puts into this it's really a lot of fun um but so last year uh, we had eight people and this year we had an extra thursday in march but we also wanted to expand the number of people who could participate so we made it a whole sweet 16. so we have 16 uh heads up people from the rec poker community uh, vying for the title this year. Um, last week, we had four matchups. Um, uh, both uh, Tim and I played uh, last week, and um, those were fun. Uh, just quickly, we had um, me playing Jack Burke, and I luck boxed my way into a win there. Um, then uh, we had Eric Jin playing Mark Prashan and Mark, website Mark ended up winning that. So uh, not this week, but next week, you'll see that Elite Eight matchup between me and Mark. And maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, what to look in store for there. And in the bottom half of uh, last week's bracket, um, dealer 412 Andrew Feist fell to Kelly Stork, who moved on into the Elite Eight. And then Miss Click, what happened? What happened? Well, I, I don't know if you guys saw my video or not. But like I said, John's been playing poker longer than I've been <laughs> alive. We, we, we did get some good bluffs through. We did get <laughs> some was, bluffs through. That's what you said was your number one goal, right? With all, even more than winning, you wanted to get some sick bluffs through. And I, I feel like I, I did accomplish that. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, there was just some sick coolers. Um, the end, uh, the last hand, I think I got it in good and just ended up losing. I mean, <laughs> what, what do you do? It was, it was a do? great match, though. Yeah. Uh, well, and he, he definitely you... put me in some spots, too, where I was like, oh, man, like, do I call? Like, he is just barreling into me. Like, <laughs> I'm light here. I feel like I should call, but I got to fold. Like... <laughs> It, yeah. He was tough. He was tough. No, no shame in losing to Poker Geek. He's 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 a tough, tough player. He'd be always a very modest, modestly tough player. He, yes. In his video was like made the worst player win, but um, <laughs> we, we know he's got he's got some poker chops. So that was last week. Um, so those next week we'll have uh, not this week, but next week we'll have my matchup with Mark and then Kelly's matchup with John um, as part of that Elite Eight. Um, matchup as well as uh the winners from tonight so let's kind of focus in we've got four matchups tonight um the first matchup that we're going to see is uh the aforementioned previous champion the reigning champion taylor moss the number one seed taking on oslo borger tron vidar stensby um so that's our that is the the kind of the magic 116 uh matchup that we're used to seeing in, in March Madness. Um, so that'll be our first matchup of the night. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, before we kind of get to the other ones, what are, your, what are your thoughts as you kind of think about the first matchup we're going to see? Uh, I mean, I'm a big David versus Goliath guy. I mean, let's yeah. go David. Like, let's go Tron. Like, yeah. <laughs> nothing against Taylor, but I'd love to see the underdog win. Like and just like in all in situations, if you, the short stack gets it in against aces, I root for them every time. <laughs> and that's one of those things about the heads up matchups too. It's just one and done too. So anything can happen. That's part of the madness. 
Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, Trond is, is a very well-studied player. Um, when he contributes to our forum posts, it's always really thoughtful. Um, so I think he's going to give, give Taylor a, a run for his money here. I think it should be an interesting uh, matchup to kick off the evening. Um, and of course, I mean, Taylor's a superstar. Um, so that will, you know, you never know where this is going to, this one's going to go. Um, and then in our next matchup, uh, we've got um, the Battle of Canada, although we do have some other Canadians, but this is featuring two of our prominent Canadians uh, in rec poker. We have uh, Bluffsterini, Jim Reed versus Fergie 56, Kim Kilroy. And this this is this is one of those matchups that everybody circled, I think, when they saw the opening round and said, OK, this is that one that, you know, like if I can only make one, this is the one I'm, I'm I kind of want to check out. Um, so what, what what are your what are your thoughts here on on the old Bluffster Rooney versus Fergie 56? Uh, well, I'm going to say Fergie is definitely a really good player yeah. and. I also think Jim's a really good player. Now, it's just whether or not Fergie catches Jim when he's trying to run one of his monster bluffs. <laughs> I think that's going to be the deciding factor there. And I will say that when I was filling out my bracket for this whole thing, I was just going matchup to matchup like, man, like there's just not one like clear cut where I'm like, okay, this person's going to win. Okay, this person, like every time I was like, this is a toss up like this is hard like it, it's I think this is going to be that's going to be a very tough matchup I think but I think I'm gonna go with Fergie probably yeah you're gonna go with Fergie yep. yeah I mean I I, I I I don't know how to pick this one when I saw it lined up um you know there was some trash talk going back and forth about being the reigning Canadian champion and all that kind of stuff going on um but yeah, I, I really respect both of these players, the way they think about poker. Um, Kim is just such a talented uh, player and she's got such a mind for the game. And, and um, you know, Jim, Jim, like you said, he's, he's one of those players that um, I think he really understands when to push the envelope, when to find that moment of aggression versus when to take a step back. He's really good at changing pace. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that'll be a really interesting dynamic as they as they kind of um, match up in this first round. But you both of them were thinking that you know, it would have been they would have rather have matched up later down the road. But that is how the brackets work sometimes. So, yep. Yeah. And so then uh, we're going to carry on into our, our third matchup of the night. Uh, we get our own Rab Man 50, Rob Washam, uh, taking on Keck Geek 65, Jacob Kiki. And this is another one. This is a pretty killer matchup. Um, you know, I think Kekki comes into this a little bit like with a chip on the shoulder being so lowly seated for somebody who's just consistently winning at the home game level. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm curious, what, what, what are your thoughts on this one? Let's see, I, Jacob's stats, like they just speak for themselves. Like I personally haven't even really played with him a whole lot at the, in the home games. I've seen him do a couple things where I'm like, man, this guy is crazy, but he finds a way to win. And that's key in poker. But Rob, on the other hand, he does a lot of study. Mm -hmm. I know he's doing a lot of study. He does his book study and he's always asking questions, but it's kind of, you know, just old school versus new school. That one, like it's, that's another one of those matchups where I, I just have to go with the guy with the experience. I think, I think Rob's going to win just for the fact that he's definitely been playing longer than Jacob's been alive. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I feel like Rob's probably going to win that one. Uh, Rob, Rob, who runs the rec poker book study. If you're, if you're not familiar with that, it's one of our great offerings. And I think you, if you haven't checked out his book study, you should. Um, he does a great job with it. And um, yeah, he's a formidable opponent anytime he, he shows up. But, you know, I, I think this is one of those where, uh, you know, I, I really do think it's, it's a very big toss up, um, not like the seedings would suggest. And um, since you picked Rob, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go with Jacob in this one. I think Jacob's going to, continue his winning ways he seems to find a way to win whenever he needs to 
Um, and he's a confounding player. Like, you know, when I play him in the home game, it's just like, it's, he's just aggressive. He's, he's, he, he puts you in tough spots. He makes you make really hard decisions. Um, ones that you're either folding too much or you're calling too often, or there's all kinds of things he, he puts you into sort of tough corners. So I think it'll be a good matchup, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, go out on a limb and pick Jacob in that one. Um, and then, so our, our nightcap of the evening will be the master of social, Chad McVean, the pad, podcast savant, pr- listens to more podcasts than probably, uh, you're speaking about like the time we've been alive. I think he's listened to more podcasts than I've ever been alive. He's, <laughs> he's uh, he listens to about like, he must listen to about like 27 speed or something. But so Chad McVean will be taking on another Canadian, taking on Keith Brandt, Monkey System. Uh, in our nightcap of the evening. And this is the dreaded 512 matchup, which if you're familiar with March Madness is ripe for upsets. So do you think we're going to see an upset in this one? I, this matchup's also tough because I feel like, you know, if it was a mixed game, I would just automatically pick Chad, no doubt about it. He's a mixed game crusher. Keith puts a lot of study in. He puts a lot of study in. Um, and I think I think that might be the edge here because I definitely know Keith puts in a lot of work off the felt when Chad's listening to podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's sort of a matter of whether the, you know, like, do we learn from the study or we do learn from the podcast? Or we learn right. somewhere in between, I suppose. That's gonna that's gonna maybe where this this battle's gonna line up a little bit. Um, so those are going to be our, our four matchups tonight. Um, I think it's a really action-packed night. I think we should have some great poker, lots of things to talk about. Um, but before we kind of get started, uh, Tim, let's talk about some of your stuff at Rec Poker. What's going on with you? What's going on uh, with Rec Poker these days with you? Yeah, so we've got a couple things going. Um, first thing, we recently started streaming Wednesdays. Um, I stream on my own channel. Um, but I do DTO f- streams for all of Rec Poker members to join. You don't have to be premium or anything. You just pop on in, um, and we do an hour of just DTO study, and then the home game right after. Mm-hmm. Um, so last night we did PLO after the study. Um, I think I lasted, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> not that's about my speed with plo it's just like I, let's get the chips in and see if i win <laughs> it 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 was definitely interesting i'm not a plo guy there's many other variants i would rather play but the dto stuff is awesome i think you know my big thing with dto is they say you know do 50 hands a day and you'll get better so last night in that hour i think i was able to do 120 to 150 hands that we made it through. Um, and I actually hit my new streak for hands correctly in a row of nice. uh, 16 in a row without any mistakes, which is pretty cool. Yeah, nice to do cool. that on stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. Um, and then we also just released my coaching in the Rec Poker Coaching. Uh, if you go in there, Um, basically what I'm doing is if you have any hands that you're not for sure pre-flop and, uh, you want to see if, you know, what you did is correct, I can run HRC systems for you. And basically they range from one hand at $8 all the way up to a package of 10. Um, the most being like an IC, ICM PKO sim, because those take forever to run. Mm -hmm. Um, 10 of those would be a hundred dollars. And then there's just different variants in between like $8 and $100, depending on the amount of SIM, what you're looking for, all the way from just regular chip EV, ICM, bubble, PKO, PKO, ICM, PKO, bubble, all of that. Um, And then also for $100, you can do an hour with me and I can train you how to use HRC. And then with that, you also get a, a video of me explaining HRC and one week of email or discord or however you feel comfortable messaging for support. Like, Hey, I know we did this the other night, but uh, I'm having trouble in this spot. Can you help me out? And so I'll give you support for a week afterwards as well. 
Very cool. Very cool. And so that's live right now on the site. Yep. It is right. live. You just have to go to coaching. All right. Well, go check it out. Go check out coaching. Um, and if you're kind of curious about both some of these preflop spots, uh, as well as kind of uh, down the road, because like some of your stuff with DTO goes post flop and stuff, and we're talking about you know yep. where 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 we go with that too. So go check out all those things. Uh, cool, cool. Um, what else? What else is going on with you? Anything else rec poker wise or poker wise or those kinds of things? Um, I mean, I did just make a Twitch affiliate the other night. Nice. Um, I. Uh, was talking with uh, the Benz Benz. He's a streamer um, for ACR, and he wasn't able to stream his home game. And so he offered me, you know, hey, you want to stream my home game? I'll tweet it out for you. And then we were doing giveaways in the chat. And I think just in that one night, I ended up with like 50 new followers, 60 new followers. At one point, I had like 70 people in chat. By the way, that's very hard to manage. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was definitely a little bit of a learning curve at first, but we had a blast. Uh, and that just put me over the edge, which was sweet. Um, and he does all kinds of giveaways. Um, I shout him out on Twitter all the time if you guys are interested. But he does giveaways on all his streams from 660 stakes in his home game. If you comment like, yeah, I want to play your home game, he sends you the buy-in to get into his home game. And then if you make the final table, he sends you $30 on top of the score. Oh. Um, so probably a good way to gain some followers. I might have to tip into some of his tricks there. But, <laughs> but he's Well, that's really just... cool because I, I, that's always, a, I know, a big stretch to make that affiliate because then you can start to expand your channel, do other things with it. They, you have a little bit more flexibility. You can get those custom emojis or emotes or whatever they call yep. them, right? Yep. So there's, there's all those kind of cool things going on. Uh, well, cool. That's really that's really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And so the, the other thing that um, uh, I wanted to kind of mention in terms of rec poker going on is that we're, um, we're starting up, there's a couple things you can start looking um, that I'm excited about uh, on my end. We're really starting to think about how we, I know one of the things that people have talked to us about is how our content is organized, how sometimes there's so much great stuff going on at Rec Poker, but it's hard to get a handle on where to find it all, how to kind of wrap your arms around it and figure out where to, which piece of the pie do you want to sort of take a bite out of. Um, and so we're working really hard to rethink how we organize, what we do, where you can find it. Um, and the, you'll start to see little drips of that starting to roll out uh, in April. And hopefully by the end of April, you'll start to see a really a much more changed sort of way in which our content um, gets organized. And along with that, um, you know, one of my big roles at Rec Poker is to sort of lead our monthly seminars. Um, and so we're going to be starting to roll out a series of these so that you can kind of plan ahead and look ahead at what we're going to be offering. They'll have some linked pieces involved. Um, and there's going to be some other linked content in the month. So for instance, uh, in April, when we uh, build this, we're going to have, we're going to look at a final table, a simulated final table that simulates the ACR Venom and the uh, table. And along with that, we're gonna look at ICM spots. So we're gonna be able to have Darrow Kearney comment during the seminar piece, uh, but we're also gonna have some guest pieces. So like Gareth James, who's been doing some pieces with the Rec Poker for a while, will be joining us um, for Q and A sessions on the monthly topic. We'll be uh, aligning some of our learning with partners content to feed into looking at the monthly content. So this year, this month, it'll be looking at final tables and ICM. And then the other piece uh, that we're gonna add to this is an end of the month Q and A where we're gonna have um, some people and maybe some special guests coming to talk uh, with you uh, after you've had a chance to digest all that content, look it over, look at the seminar, and then come in for a live Q and A where we really talk through and kind of dig deep on some of your questions and some next steps there. So I'm really excited about this and I think it'll help answer some of the questions about 
how do I take a bite out of the apple here if I'm if I'm not sure where to even start? Um, I, we're really trying to find ways to do that. And along with that, um, as you kind of like we're talking to, to Tim here, you just have to, the other thing that we're gonna be trying to do is really uh, be able to start featuring more of our wrecking crew members and the really cool things that everyone is doing here. Um, you know, Tim's sort of stuff is just kind of one example of all the really cool things that are going on. Uh, from our Wrecking Crew. If you're not familiar with the Wrecking Crew is, I encourage you to go look it up. Uh, but it's a way to get more deeply involved with Wreck Poker uh, and to sort of have your own sort of set of offerings and tools um, and pieces like that. And, and you'll, if you don't know what it is, go look it up, but uh, it'll become a lot more apparent as this sort of new content uh, pieces start to roll out. So that's that's kind of what I'm really excited about uh, yeah, coming sounds- up with Wreck Poker. Sounds awesome. Um, I do know, like I've already kind of mentioned it to Jim a little bit, but like, like with the ICM stuff, for instance, um, I'm going to be gearing my DTO stuff around that as well, like as much as I can. So like um, next month in the streams and then also in the Sunday session for premium members, we're going to be just going over ICM spots in DTO um, from different positions and different stack depths. Um, we should be able to follow along most of the time, um, you know, as much as we can anyway, there's going to be some stuff where, you know, DTO doesn't have like satellite play or PKOs or stuff like that, but we'll try to follow along. Um, and then another cool thing with that is, uh, DTO actually within the last like two weeks, something that I have grateful for. So they've released, they've always had their pre-flop and three way, but it was just kind of a click through before they released a trainer for it and so you know you get you pick a position pre-flop and stack depth and then it just starts giving you hands and you pick whether it's an open or a fold and it tells you if you're correct or not game changer that is a game changer yeah that's really cool that's really cool and you know and i think that's that's sort of my hope with all this is that it starts to become feeling like we as a community are having a month long conversation around ICM and final tables. And then the next month we're having a conversation with all the things that we're doing around satellites. And then the next month we're doing, you know, whatever these are, and you'll start to see what these are as we kind of roll them out. But uh, that's kind of the, the hope and goal. And if you have um, ideas or topics that you think that we should uh, help focus a month around areas of your game that you're interested in getting a little involved with, uh, rec poker reach out to me let me know i'm going to be trying to set the schedule for that and i'm really thinking about what those might look like so if you have ideas um please reach out to me i'd love to hear i'd love to hear from the rec poker community on that um all right well look we're getting close to start time we've got about four minutes before uh, i think we're we're getting going with our first matchup the taylor moss uh tron vidar stensby matchup um, I want to remind everyone that we've got uh, predictions uh, that you can make within the Twitch stream chat here. Um, just uh, you can vote with your channel points. Um, pick who you think is going to win. You can win channel points that way. And the other thing uh, we're doing is we always have contests um, during streaming. It's generally uh, when Taylor's streaming, we're generally picking what position Taylor is going to finish in the home game. But uh, for these uh, matchups, what we're asking you to do is to pick what you think the winning hand is going to be. You don't have to be exactly, you know, we're, we're looking for things like ace king, not ace of hearts, king of spades. So what you think the winning hand might be, if you pick that winning hand, um, you're going to win one of our, our prizes. Um, and uh, so uh, get those in the chat, uh, get those going um, so that we can start to, to hear from you and get you eligible to win prizes um, for the evening. Um, Tim, any any last minute thoughts before we kind of get going with this matchup? Um, You know, the only advice I can give to anybody picking a hand, do not pick pocket fives to win the match because Taylor will have automatically folded them. (laughs) <laughs> well if you're picking tron to win yeah he'll yeah win that's true five, that's right? true that is yeah, possible that's true that's that is true this may this is why tron's gonna win right because taylor's <laughs> taylor's gonna have fold fives in a really position where he should be doing something else 
We all know he's that's his great, biggest leak. Yeah, because I mean, everybody knows fives flops a set at least two out of three times. Two out of three. Yeah, it, it, that's a that's actually a mathematically known fact. All right. Um, so yeah, reminder: uh, get those predictions in, get those uh, hands in. Um, if you haven't um, seen our matchup again, this is our one sixteen matchup. I'm seeing that the players are kind of getting ready to get started here, so we're going to be getting close to going here. Um, uh, Tim, you know, as we kind of get going with thinking about these matchups and heads up play, um, what are some things that you generally think about uh, heads up um, as you're as you're as if you're approaching a heads up matchup? Um, so heads up is like one of my weaker spots. I really don't study it a whole lot, but what I find works for me is mixing up what you're raising and what you're limping with. Like you obviously just don't want to always raise like your best hands and limp with your worst. You want to be doing a lot of mixing um for me i try i don't always execute well but i try to like mix my race sizes too with no apparent reason like i could have ace king this time make it three big blinds next time with ace king i'll limp oh i have jack 10 this time so i'm gonna make it two and a half or oh this time i'm gonna make it three and a half it makes you a lot trickier to play if you're just mixing everything up mm -hmm. and then generally like if you have a pair just be aggressive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I found aggression in heads up matches really works. Yeah. Especially yeah. in something like this where it's a one and done. There's no rebuys. There's no losers bracket. It's you lose your done. So people are probably going to be folding a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the, the thing people who approach heads up uh, for the first time, if they're not that well schooled in it, it's, it is, um, we just have to really, open up our, our our ranges, our qualifying hands, the ones that we continue with aren't, they are not this, it's not really the same as when we're playing in a full ring. And that is something we'll see as these matchups play out and develop uh, tonight. Um, I think we'll see a lot of um, hands going, you know, fourth or fifth pair can sometimes be a really strong holding versus a holding that we're, um, we're just kind of getting rid of as fast as we can. Right, right. Yeah, if you've watched any of, like, the high-stakes duels or anything, it's like, there's not a lot of folding going on there yeah, uh, yeah. pre-flop, you know? Your head's up. You're seeing any two cards at that point. That's where it is hard to make a pair. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. All right, it looks like we've got uh, the feed going. It looks like we're just getting started here. So here we go. Um, we've got opening hand. We've got um, a reminder here. We've, they're starting with uh, th 3,000 in chips. We're starting with it at the 2040 level. So about 75 big blinds to start. Um, and well, exactly 75 big lines to start. And we've got uh, Trond opening up to 3X to 120 with the 6-5 offsuit. And Taylor elects to fold his queen there. What, what, do, we, what do we think there? Uh, could just be firsthand, you know, just letting it yeah, go. Just, but yeah, I mean, no. I'm, I'm probably calling there face card. Yeah, um, I kind of like I like I like you know it is that first hand sort of like feeling things out, but I do like to see see hands with face cards uh, at least to see a flop. Generally, uh, so we get a flop here uh, after Taylor led uh, with the king queen queen. He's got backdoor clubs, um, and as Tron, this is an interesting spot when we have an ace high on a flop like this. Um, it's one where we could continue once and see what happens with our ace high aces are a pretty powerful card heads up yeah um, most definitely um i would i would have liked to see a call there but i also think taylor made it just big enough like if it was 50 60 there i, I think tron might call but 90 it makes it a little bit tougher so he chose like a little bit bigger of a sizing yep yep 
and we are just kind of seeing them feel each other out here. We've uh, Taylor's got a nice hand here. Um, if if Cron, Trond opens here, be curious to see what he does. Yeah, I would I would expect a raise here if Trond opens. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. We're going to be out of position. Um, so it's it's a it's a good hand. Yeah, I like I like this and I like this. I was just going to ask you what sizing you would do. I, I was going to say I would want to go bigger, like anywhere from two fifty to three hundred. Yeah, yeah, I liked that sizing too. Yeah, it was very very good. And they have been mixing up. At least uh, I guess Taylor's been mostly doing the same sizing, but Tron's been mixing up some of his open sizing. We'll kind of see how that plays out a little too. Yeah. Okay, I like the raise with that hand. Mm -hmm. Three deuce suited. There we go. This is an interesting spot. Oh, too. They'll play pocket twos, but not fives. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I like the the uh, three bet with the ace here. Yep. Makes it a really tough spot. It does with the with the deuces here. Um, we can be ahead a lot here uh, when we call, but we're always in a tough spot. There's no flop without a deuce that we like. Right. So it's it's a it's a tough spot. We do have position, um, but our our opponents are going to continue a lot, and Tron continues big um, after the three bet. Now, if we if we put uh, our opponent on, you know, Broadway cards and aces that do this kind of thing. Um, can we ever hang on with deuces there? Or are we just kind of set mining at that point? I think it's just a set mine, really. I mean, it's kind of a tough spot. Yeah. I think his bet size is what does it. He bet so big. He did. He did bet really big. Like you're thinking most aces would downsize a little bit on the flop. Uh, most like naked aces that don't have anything. But for that, I'm thinking like, okay, he's got like queens plus here. Mm -hmm. Taylor's got straw paired board. Ooh. I mean, we, we we're not going to win this hand unless we do something like this, probably. So we get we're going to take a stab as Trond. Um, Taylor calls with his uh, sort of king high, which is probably just good enough. Um, I think that'll do it. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, you can either check here and give up, or you got to put in a healthy bet. See, this is one where I'd like to see Tron kick it up a notch. Yeah, for sure. This is, and I think one of the things that to, to say about this too is that when we're out of position um, with these kind of strong holdings, we, we just benefit a lot from, from pushing our opponent up. And I would like to see this raise even a little bit more. I was going to say um, it needs to be bigger because I would think if it was like 300, Taylor can maybe let it go there. Um, he's still got a really good hand heads up, but. Now he's um, actually, he's actually, you know, this has been a, a decent flop for him at this point because um, Taylor caught a piece of it, but not enough to <laughs> to really threaten us with our pocket tens. But we don't know that. And the, the right. king's got to be a little bit of a scare card for us with the tens as well. Right. Especially after calling uh, the three bet. Yep. I do like it, though. Just continued aggression. That's my kind of player. <laughs> Yeah, he's he really has uh, had the pedal down this pretty much this whole matchup. This is and now Taylor's in a really tough spot. Um, I think our and then see that's a card as Taylor. You just well actually both players don't like that card, right? Um, but I think it probably yeah. I was gonna say yeah. it's gonna go check check there. It would have been interesting to see how that hand played out on a blank, though. A blank yep. river would have been a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> All right. 
right. This is a very interesting flop here. Taylor uh, flops top pair. Uh, and Trond is open ended. Yeah, and Taylor is backdoor flush draw too. This yep. this hand here could get spicy. Yep. I like it. I'd like to see like a ten of spades. Yeah. Well, it's still spicy. That ten could make it real interesting. You throw a ten out there on the river, that could right. be a game set yeah, match. You're absolutely right. I guess they would chop. Now that I look at it more. Yeah. Got ahead of myself. And I like that. I think that that played out kind of like how it should be. All right. So now uh, blinds have just gone up. Um, so um, we're, we're getting a little, you know, we still, still fairly deep stacked, but it's getting a little bit pricier here. Um, I like the open. Um, now, again, you know, when we've got a hand, you know, 5-8, it's probably bottom of the barrel, but I think it's one of those that we can even still, I, I often think of hands that uh, when the price isn't too high and we can flop a straight, um, that they are probably good enough heads up. Yeah, I was going to say good enough hands. There's not really, I mean, a whole lot that you want to be folding pre-flop heads up. Um, unless the raises are bigger. Yeah, right. Because so often, I mean, it just depends on the flop. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can get blinded down, but you also don't have to call flop. You know, once you get to the flop, you can always yeah. fold. It's so, and we're, we're still, we're deep enough here that it's still so cheap to to see some of those flops that it can really be worth it. Well, we were behind the whole time as Taylor, and now we're even more behind. But I think this this will. I was gonna say that's a card you got to barrel on, and yep. yep, just snap call. Unfortunately, if, if the queen doesn't come, I think uh, even though we were behind, I think that bet works. Uh, yep. But just yep. When our just unfortunate that he hit top pair. Rivers top pair. You're just. You're just going to be paying them off. King five. Oh, he didn't even kick it up with the king five. <laughs> well, and this is one of those interesting spots. So now, you know, uh, the stacks have really become a little bit, uh, you know, much more weighted uh, towards Trond. And this is where um, Taylor's going to have to pick his spots to – and I actually don't mind becoming a little bit more when we get short stacked to be a little bit more cautious in terms of our approach. Yep. Yep. I just love King five. <laughs> That's my hand. Yeah. Got his trips, but did not, did not get paid off anymore there. So. Yeah. I think um, he kind of got max value there. Yeah. And you'll notice uh, as Taylor got, is getting shorter stacked, he has uh, now just gone to a min open, which I really yep. like. I think as we um, we want to be adjusting our open sizing based on what our what our stack depth looks like. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, you think about it. You open twice at two and a half big blinds. Well, now you're out three big blinds versus our. You're out an extra big blind, I should say, right, versus right. just being at, you're out five instead of four, you know, if you lose two hands. And that adds up. For sure. So we call this Taylor, we hit bottom pair. This is one where we may, this is one of those really tough ones where mm -hmm. we may have to find ourselves hanging on. Um, this is this is this this is always really hard though because when uh, any traditional sort of opening range is one where we are, you know, really quite nervous about the ace and the jack. 
Right. And if we face aggression here, we're going to um, be in some trouble. Now, Tron doesn't have any hope of winning this without uh, a bet. Would you ever consider a small kind of blocker bet here as Taylor with that seven? Um, I actually was just thinking that myself. I probably would once he checks back on the turn because yeah. if he had an ace or a king, he's probably betting the turn. Um, yeah, he could have some jacks and just bomb on us, but if he does, you know, so be it in that situation. Um, but I think I would go for a small block bet, like even 20% pot. Yeah. Sure. You open yourself up to get raised, but you know, a lot of the time he's either going to raise you with the nuts or he's going to fold. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is another interesting yeah. spot here. so this is a really uh yeah i was just gonna say if this board gets i think this might save taylor because that this board just got really dirty yeah um, there's a lot of stuff to come home with that card that yep. makes an eight no longer good i feel like the price is just too much yeah i would like to see like maybe 100 or 130 and maybe taylor can call i think the price is just a little too high but i also thought the price was a little high on the turn as well mm -hmm. yeah I'd like now to see the three yeah, and say pop, <laughs> popping this for sure And Taylor in position, let's go the king. I think that's fine, especially as we're getting a little bit uh, lower stacked. If we're suited there, I'm probably peeling. But I yeah, think suited, I'd say peel. Or if it wasn't a six and it was something like a nine or a ten plus peel, but king six off, not much you can do there. Yeah. Like to see Tron bet here. Yeah. Taylor's yeah, been putting some tough spots here so far, and he's been he's mostly been up against it. Mm -hmm. uh, Tron did have that one eight deuce, and now he's got eight deuce again. Let's see what he does with this. Is he just going to open fold it, or is he going to get he's going to get a little spicy with it? And he's going to outflop him. <laughs> that is the story of a heads up. Oh match. well, that's gonna. Make matters. Uh, I, I don't know that he's going to get much out of Tron here, but uh, certainly has a, mm. a nice, nice looking hand right now. I think sizing. Oh, he did get a call. Yeah, I think. All right. I think so I'm let's talk about this. There. On this river, we've just been called. We, um, we have the nuts. What, what are we doing? How big are you making this? Um. I like a small to a half pot, yeah. personally. Something that I think is going to get called. Um, we could also just polarize it. Look like, you know, we're in desperation mode because we've been kind of losing a lot. But on a straight blank, oh, he, he got does, max he value. Does, he got Ooh. the call there. I, I think um, I would probably fold the eight deuce there. But yeah. Yeah. Again, I never it's know hard to make a pair I'm, heads I'm up. Going bigger in those spots, trying to target like a queen or whether I'm going smaller, trying to target something like an eight. Um, I can, th those are the, I think, really tricky river spots. Right, where, especially because like, um, another line is to go like 20% a pot and hope that you get raised by top pair. Yeah, yeah. It's just rivers are tough. Yeah. Rivers are tough. All right, blinds are up again. Um, and we've got both players with an ace in their hand. Um, Ooh, Tron gets tricky and limps the ace. I like it. Mixing it up. Taylor's not going to have that. No. Nope. Went pretty big, too. Just about 4x. Just under. Yeah. 
Ooh. <laughs> what a spot. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to limp ace four, I guess that's the way to do it. Really now what do you do with ace nine? I mean, I think you, you got to call. Yep. I think you have to call. It's not a big enough um, raise there from Tron for me to let go of a hand. Heads up, ace nine is a really yeah. strong holding. Oh, and when he checks back, if I'm Taylor, I'm going gas to the floor here. I'm probably going big, like 600. If you got lucky and hit the 10, so be it. But when he checks back, whew. Those checkbacks get me into trouble. <laughs> Good. So noted. <laughs> All right. Now what are we doing? I was going to say we got a call. That is just dirty. And a blank. Oh, and it's not a blank. That's right. He has a four. Now we check. <laughs> oh, that is, that is, that is <laughs> dirty. That's dirty, dirty, dirty. Those are the worst. I was thinking we were headed for a chop there. There was going to be an overcard, but it got, it was mm -hmm. even worse for Taylor with that four. So far, Taylor has had um, a pretty bad run of making second pair when his opponent has a better better hand. Better hand, yeah. It's been tough. And Tron's been playing him tricky, too. Like, yep. here, I'll just check to you and hope you have a little peace. Last diamond comes home. Is Tron going to bet or is it going to go check, check? I think if he checks, it goes check, check. Yeah, Ooh. I think he's got a bet here. Um, I don't think we can be too nervous about diamonds the way this has been played. Um, nor do I think Taylor can ever have an ace here. So this is a really tough spot for him. Got value too. That's a tough spot. Like, he mm -hmm. can have a lot of bluffs there, um, where our where our seven is good. But does Taylor have about fifteen bigs? Yeah, yeah. Say he's got a jam. Yeah, he's reached a, a stack size here where he's really – he is kind of forced into some tough spots where he's – Yeah, really kind of handcuff mode. And I like, I like this. You notice here he switched to limping, um, which I think is what we want to uh, allow ourselves to give ourselves more room to have some more play uh, when we get into these sort of stack depths, especially heads up. Um, so I, I really like that limp. Um, and then we once we hit top pair, we've got to continue here. We're mm -hmm. never folding uh, at this point with this hand. Still, though, with that call, then you're like, oh, man, like, does he have it? <laughs> like, if he has a king, I'm beat. If he has mm -hmm. a two, I'm beat. Like, what's he calling with? Right. I do like the smaller sizing. Just keep. Yep. Keep small ball in it. Yeah, I mean, we, we're targeting any other pocket pair um, that is between the, you know, the, basically is not a full house. So um, those would be really nice. We're targeting uh, some other broadways that didn't fold. And um, Tron leads when the flush comes home. <laughs> oh man, and Taylor's got two pairs. See, yeah, that is a tough question. I don't, th I don't think. Yeah, when the flush comes home, I don't think we can ever do anything but what he just did. Yeah. He tried. Yep. It would have been interesting if he would have picked, like, a little bit of a bigger size and what would have happened. I would think right. two pair you still have to call. Yeah. But he's making some pretty interesting moves, Trond is. Yep. 
So Taylor gets a top pair here. Uh, we're up against eight three. Um, he's gonna flat call it here. I wouldn't have hated a raise there by Taylor. I was just gonna ask about that because, like, I I think we are getting low, but I think it's it's an interesting spot to raise there it gives us a little bit of protection but it also um it forces our opponent to you know like to make some decisions with some tougher hands when they have a lot of the initiative to start six we get a little blocker back I think, here I or was it a misclick boy i i don't know what to do there i think i might even be raising there um but, but I don't know. Yeah, I think you have to raise there. But then it's so tricky. Like, I, I say that, but, like, when I'm physically playing myself and I start facing, like, a one big blind bet, so I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> like, do they just have the nuts and like they're trying to eke out value because they don't know what I'll call? So they're like, ah, he has to call one big blind. Right, right. No, those really tiny bets, um, the shallower we get, the more and we, the bigger, when we're in a heads up matchup and we have a much bigger stack than our opponent, this, those really tiny bets can just be totally confounding because they're so important to our opponent to get right. And to us, they're almost meaningless. So we can put all the pressure on them um, without risking very much. And we can do it with our really extreme value as well as our kind of our total garbage. Right. Oh, you got the 10-4, good buddy. <laughs> Open it up. I'll Curious what Tron does here. Man, that's close. It's a very small bet. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I think it was just small enough that you can call, but you can also fold because it was like yeah. just over 2x Taylor's bet. It was, that was close, 10-4. I mean, it's yeah, basically it's, hoping it's for a flush or a ten. not a good, not a good hand. So yeah, but it's that's a tough spot. Tron kind of flops the world and uh, checks back with six high. Um, and I, I, that's an interesting thing. And I would have really liked to bet there. Yeah. Um, but it may work out for him. Yeah. In his favor, having checked this through. If he bets small enough, he might get. Uh, yeah, I think call he went. Back. He went too big, too big. I think. Yeah. A smaller bet, and I think Taylor can call having just because of the sheer fact he has a six there, and he's kind of blocking the nuts. Yep. Yep. Oh, this is. Whew. Well. Good, good night, game, Taylor. Unless you hit a queen. If anyone guessed Ace King in the chat, I think you might. Uh, Oof. Oh. oh, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for anyone guessed Ace King, we might have a winner here. I, I don't. That's tough. It didn't get three bet pre either, did it? No. Oh, boy. Just smooth calls. Yeah, that's that's rough. That he's Tron's playing it to get all the chips. Granted, it would have just got in free yep. if it was three bet, but after the smooth call, I don't think if you're Taylor, you can be very worried about anything. Nope. Now, if Tron jams, you can kind of think, well, shit, like, does he have two pair? Smooth calls again. Now Tron's just got to put them all in. That's what I would do. 
I don't want to risk a check back here. 673. <laughs> <laughs> and now Taylor's in the grinder. Oh, if he's gonna call. Well, good game. That was game. Uh, that was definitely a cooler at the end. Uh, nothing cooler at the end, and I don't I don't think there's anything you can really do there. Not not knocking Tron by any means because he did play very well, but yeah, I felt did. like Taylor kind of had the worst of it the whole way. Yeah, for sure. But I, you know, it was definitely um, boy. And I'm looking back at the chat. We had Ace Jack, Ace Ten, Ace Queen, Ace Eight. Uh, but no ace kings were guessed. So, huh. um, but a lot of a lot of ace x was guessed. So, um, people were around the right the right uh, area, but not didn't quite pin it down. But um, we're gonna be so we're gonna be shifting gears now. Good game to Tron. Good game to Taylor. Um, that was really well fought out. Well, good match. Um, any thoughts on that before we sort of move on to sort of getting ready for the, the next one? I, like you said, I think it was a really good match. Tron played really well. Um, I don't have much experience with him, but uh, he definitely played really well. Taylor got put in some interesting spots often with second pair. Um, yep. And I think he played well for the hands he was given and the hands he was against. Yep, I agree. Um, and I, you know, I think Tron uh, played really well too. He had, he had those moments we talked about where he got really uh, aggressive at the right time. Um, he had that one really nice bluff with the eight deuce. Um, he, yeah, he, 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 it wasn't just card distribution. He played, he played really well there as well. So uh, good game to those two. Um, so I want to remind everyone again, uh, we're gearing up for our second matchup. This is the battle of Canada. Uh, Kim Petvet Kilroy versus Jim Bluff Starini Reed. Um, get those votes in. Predict who's going to win our second matchup and let us know what you think the winning hand might be. Uh, we've already seen Ace King. Will it show up again or will some other, some other hand sneak in there for the win? Um, in this matchup, can't believe what nobody if- guessed Ace King. Yeah, I know, right? It's a, it's a pretty good guess. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the thing about it in Heads Up, it's always some, like, garbage, like, you know, somebody gets low and then somebody calls off with, like, ace-deuce, right? And, like, they win with ace-deuce, so. Right. Um, uh, well, so w- any thoughts about the – what are you expecting to see in this next matchup, in this matchup number two? I think, you know, this is going to be – a well, I would say, executed match. I think there's going to be a lot of plays where we're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I do think Jim is going to try to get some bluffs through. Um, Pet Vet is going to play by the book. Mm -hmm. A very well-studied player. Um, And I think it's just going to – this is going to be a grinder, I feel. Yeah. I don't know if too many chips are going to be flying around. Um, like I said, I think Jim might try to get a little spicy, but at times, but I think all it'll take is one, one time getting caught and it's going to turn into just a small ball grinder. Yeah. Well thought out, well executed poker. Well, this is truly one of those marquee matchups. So um, I've, I've been kind of, looking forward to this one all week. I think the players are getting ready. So I think we're going to switch over to there shortly. All right. I think here they are. So we've got them going. Um, this is going to be one heck of a matchup. Um, get those predictions in reminder. Um, well, there it is. Maybe it'll be maybe first hand, first hand. We'll just see Jim run one of his wicked bluffs. This will be a one hand <laughs> matchup, right? And anyone who picked Ace King, you're gonna win. But no, he he just folds. So he doesn't bluff every hand. We've just learned that. <laughs> Seen he gave thumbs up, so Fergie must have showed. Yeah, maybe. They both have the Canadian flags going. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it, love it. All 
Yeah, well, maybe they'll just not hit see a flop. Jim's not really <laughs> getting any playable hands here. <laughs> this might be one of his best hands yet. Yeah, it has been so far. But we all know Jim. He's going to get fed up. Yep, he's going to see a flop. <laughs> And two aces are going to roll off when you have eight high. And Kim can bet this, or she can actually check this with the king high. It's it's an interesting hand to uh, do both. When our, our opponent, our parent opponent, doesn't have that many aces in their range, we've got one of the better hands, so we're really only nervous about a three. But I like I like the bet because we often have the best hand. And I think now Jim has to bet here. Um, I was going to say sizing is going to be key here. I was going to mm -hmm. say if he goes small, Kim could probably call a king high. Yep. But that sizing, I think he nailed it. Yep, I agree. I'm going to see a limp here. Like it. I was curious to see if Kim was going to raise this because like some uh, some theory might say we're going to raise some of our absolutely worst garbage hands, but she might do that with some of her offsuit ones. Right. I was um, thinking offsuit. You can you can raise suited. Eh, it's probably a mix, but I mean, I would probably raise it, but I also play more aggressively. Mm -hmm. Um. Nothing going here. Who wants it more? Yeah, Jim might bet with the Queen of Hearts. That's um, what I was thinking. Queen of Hearts here. He, he can bet and just take it down. Yeah. And he goes for a big sizing via the pot. Another one of these, you know, uh, deuces hands. They're, they're really tricky to play heads up. Yeah. Well, in general, but in heads general. up especially. Yeah. I haven't studied heads up ranges, but I would like to assume that they are pretty wide. They are. Because even with deuces on a flop like that, I mean, you're not loving life. Nope. Especially with that. It's like, okay, I guess I can call one time to see if you keep barreling. Right. And Jim has been uh, taking a, a kind of a limping strategy here. Um, I'm curious to see when, when he gets a more premium holding, what he does too. Right. Okay. I like the bet with the 10. Now I'd like to see a raise. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're in a tough spot, Jim. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> He's going to call, and then now he's going to rep the three. Mouse, uh, Eric in the chat uh, predicted 10 deuce as the, the winning hand here, the Doyle. So he's got the Doyle. Is there any way he could possibly win this hand? <laughs> that, would, that would be sick. I don't know. And I don't think it could even – even if a 10 came, I don't think if uh, – Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think – I don't think they're getting it in for this deep. Getting it in, yeah. Now, if it was me and Fortune, it's a different story. <laughs> we go at it and peel. <laughs> He's thinking about it. It's a tough spot. I mean, it is. the best size is right. The it's thing the about problem. this is, too, is like you're pretty much you're chopping with, you know, Every 10 except ace 10 here. So, and I think that's where you can start to find some folds is because you know, and you're thinking at best, I'm chopping, right? But the price is just, I mean, what is it like 30% just under yeah. half pot? Yeah, it the price, I think, is what gets a call there. Yeah, if yep. it's even a little bit more, it makes it an easier fold.
not much doing on this one. This is going to come down to who wants it more. Yeah. And who can, uh, that king is an interesting card because it really does change the dynamic of this, this board. Right. Uh, this is one of those that, that I find is really tricky in gym spot to figure out. When we're betting here, are we betting, you know, are we betting our queen fives there or whatever? Probably not. So then it's hard to figure out what we're actually betting here if it's not a king. Right. I think it so, just comes down to it's kings and bluffs. Right, right. And I think just if Pepet had just a little bit of a stronger hand there, you can call, but with no yep. pair, no draws, you can just let it go. Now, this is one of those hands I love in, in heads-up play because they both have a piece. Neither one of them loves their hand, um, but they're also hands that we're supposed to hang on a little bit with if we start to see – I mean, this may just go check it down because we both have some showdown value. Um, I do not mind a bet here from Jim. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just a big note here, you know, versus last match, like I, like I thought it would probably be, there's a lot less betting going on. Mm -hmm. um, Taylor and Tron were definitely mixing some chips up a lot more. Um, the, they're playing kind of closer to the vest, a little bit more of how you should play. Jim put in a nice three bet there with yep. the uh, ace. I like it. I like that. I like the call with the jack nine. It's close enough. Okay. We got a gutter as Jim. Um, we've got the initiative as the three better, but it's not really a board that. Really that we can really continue on a, unless we have an over pair. Now that is a card that we can represent all day, every day yep. as the three better. Um, and we probably should. Since we actually have it. And I would like to see like a small bet here. Yep, agreed. Really small, actually. I'd like, like to go hundred like to two hundred. Yeah, 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 some somewhere in there, just to get you know. Okay, like you could have a draw. You could have any face card, and you're still going to call. Now that we've we uh, kind of missed that street, I think we want to go. And it's been checked back. I think we want to go bigger here, but it's going to be very hard to be called. But I think yeah. we yeah we, we don't know. The range. This is why I like that small bet there on that on that turn, because I think we can learn a lot more about where our opponents at and what what kind of bet we can approach right. our rivers with. So here's a hand that could definitely get some chips in the pot. Yep. I definitely think pet bet has to call here. Nobody loves that card. No, no. Because now Pet Pet's ten. You know, even if Pet Pet makes the best tan she can, yeah, it's, 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 it's a dirty straight. Right. Um, but, I think this uh, is just Jim doesn't be a love fold. that either. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, I think she'll fold now. Now that the, the board's kind of degraded on her. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see a queen on the flop. Yeah. <laughs> You just like you just want blood in the streets. Every That's every right. Ah. That's right. How about Queen Nine Eight then? How about that? Yeah, that see that. Yep. <laughs> Queen Nine Eight with an eight on the turn or something. There, there yep. something. That's about how it would go too. Uh, Jim does know he's on camera, right? Because he. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> there's, there's no way anybody has a strong hand when they just made the face that Jim made. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did just uh, did just draw up to the best hand. Ooh. And then you're facing a bet like that. That makes it tough. I mean, I think if Kim saw the face that he made, uh, she's kind of curious about how he's possibly. Ooh. What a river. Yes, that is going to be, I, you know, the thing is, it's, it's an overcard to the eight. Um, I don't know that Jim's going to find, if this is too big, he's not going to uh, be able to call. 
Yeah, I would like to see a small bet, like 250, 300. What what Kim's going to be targeting with her bet here? Um, Whether she's going to, because, you know, Jim has shown some interest in this pot. So Mm. she's seeing, I think she's putting him more on 10, uh, hoping for something like a a 10-8 or a jack-10 kind of holding. Um, But um, I think we pretty much have to fold if we're Jim. Yeah, it's too but much. he might find a call. He's looking a little curious. Yep. He's thinking, hmm, do I want to sleep tonight? <laughs> He's got the queen blocker. That's um, that's but... big. I, I still think, though, uh, like a two to three hundred size bet, you know, you way downsides i think gets snapped off or called yep. for sure yep, um the sizing you're basically targeting two pair plus yep and that's one of those really tricky things when our hand gets played that way where our opponent has shown an interest in it those i think are some of the trickier spots um, right do we bet small to try to get called by everything or do we bet big to try to target some of those stronger holdings and i i i i think that's a really great mystery to me still in poker um, are some of those river spots. Jim may call a three bet here. I was going to say, I think he can call a three bet here. Yeah. He's right on the cusp. He can make a straight. He's suited. Does have a face card. I like the sizing of the three bet. Yep. Yep. Ooh, yeah, Uh-oh. that's what I'm talking about. And he's got backdoor flush. Did anyone guess ace ace? I don't think so, but that's just an awkward playing. I. I would be confused uh, after facing such a small bet and then a massive bet like that. I, Oh yeah, that would make sense. A misclick could be a misclick. Yeah. You should, you're the expert on those. You should know exactly. You should I like, usually spot see my misclicks. Like, radar, are, uh, radar. My misclicks aren't usually like that. They're usually like a misclick call and all in with like <laughs> Jack juice off or something. Uh, I did that this, uh, this past weekend. I, uh, Oh, that was horrendous. I called a, a really big shove from a very tight player with king six of diamonds. I did not mean to, but anyway. So yes. I, this is really tough once we're here as Jim. We've got uh, the gutter to the straight. We've got top pair. Uh, we've got to think that pretty much uh, a jack's probably good. The ten's probably good, although that's a little bit dicey. Um, what do we think of a seven? I don't know. I mean. Uh, this is tough. Yeah. I don't really like the sizing for the lead here because Mm -hmm. I honestly feel like, I mean, Jim can let it go now. And at this point, like if you do get called for such a big sizing, like are you ever putting them on just one pair for when they call such a big bet? Like I, I think it's one of those bet sizes where you're never getting called by Right. I mean, I think maybe we can get called by like Jack 10 of the right. Jack 10s of the world or you know maybe some hands like that. But um, it is so big that maybe even Jack 10 finds a fold there. But well played, well played. And yeah. Good full, good full by Jim. Yeah. Uh, poker, one of the skills in poker is being able to fold top pair. Mm-hmm. at the right times that's one of my favorite tags for people gets addicted to top pair yeah like all right max value this guy my addiction recently seems to be pocket nines i'm not able to to fold them very easily <laughs> when people make uh, when, when it's a board that's kind of advantageous to the nines, I'm always like, ah, you don't have that. 
I I always find nines and tens very tricky to play myself. Yeah, they're tough. They're tough holding, especially when you start to face three bets. Yeah, that's where, that's uh, where I'm uh, often in these spots where it's like, um, you know, you got pocket tens, pocket nines. It's a three bet pot. You call um, flop is like a jack five deuce, and then. Uh, six on the turn and you you're just like yeah you don't have ace jack yeah (laughs) Uh, jim's taking himself to value town here yes this is gonna be rough for him um especially now i mean you can't stop telling the story yeah what i mean i mean i guess you obviously fold to any bet but I think a check there and Jim's taking himself to value town. Now it's like, okay, you have something. I, mean, he, I just fold. Yeah. The yeah, only move he would it. have there is all in, yeah, which you would have get to shove there to represent the ace. And it would have been or Jack a even rough shape for him. Yeah. But now we've reached that uh, kind of inflection point that uh, the Tron Taylor matchup reached where now Kim has built up a pretty sizable lead Um, and um, Jim should be adjusting his play a little um, trying to get himself into position to see some flops um, and and not sort of bleed off his chips as much as he as he can try to avoid it right Um, this hand though we don't don't mind bleeding off some chips (laughs) Never raise it on the flop. Hmm. Just tell me more. Talk, let's let's talk I, about this. Uh, why do you never? Why do you never raise here? I mean, it, it's just you know they're they're showing interest in betting already. Um, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you know trips, and I've learned this from playing DTO. When you flop trips like that, um, the imposition player can bet pretty much everything. Right. Um, but when you raise, you're going to fold everything that you want value from, except for whatever the third card was. Right. They're going to call with that. They might call with some of their best aces, but other than that, everything's folding. Um, so I think you've got to call that street and then check again. And if they bet, then you can raise or you can just call and then lead the river. Um to get max value, but I, I don't like leading the flop with trips there. Yeah. Especially not heads up. Right, right. Because really they're like you're just hoping that they have a pair or a really sticky ace. And I think Pet Bet's too good of a player really to p- get too sticky with weaker aces there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Especially that size was massive. Yeah, it was a big, that was a big race too. It was like 30% of a stack. It was a pot commitment bet. Uh, and this one's tough for Jim too. He's yeah. Just, I, this one I probably, I probably can't get away with the way this, this hand has played out. Right. So far with these matches, we've just been seeing one player get just put in the blender time and time yep, again. Yep. And I don't know if it's just me, or, but I always hate when I make a pair on the river and I'm like, oh. Now I have to <laughs> now call. I have to right yeah I mean I got here what was right. I what was I like, doing to, if I was just gonna get here make a pair at right. this and Jim's getting down to that twenty big blind range um, and and blinds are going to be going up shortly so he's he's trying to figure out a spot and he takes it here he's going to three bet. Um, I don't hate it, but I also mm-hmm. don't really love it at that stack depth. Hmm. I think I think I'd rather play as a call there. Um, once you get shorter heads up, you want to play a little bit more conservatively. It right. got through, but there's a lot of times where you're just going to get called there, and then you don't know where you're at. 
Right. I do like the the sizing there that he that he picked. He, yes, he picked a, it, a sizing that uh, fits his stack size. Yep. Um, and Kim takes a really big sizing there, um, and there's a snap fold from Jim there. And much to your probably wish, we hit a seven on this one. Yep. So. This one's a little bit more awkward, though, because they both had bottom yeah. pair. Right, right. So nobody's loving life. I think a bet from uh, Kim would just take it down. But now that it's been checked the whole way, I think Jim is going to put out a bet, and then Kim's going to have to call. He has some sort of relevant cards. The six is sort of an interesting card. Right, because kind of blocking the straight. Check, check, yep. That's what I would do in Kim's shoes had it been checked to me. Yep. I think this is one we can fold from Jim, even though we don't want to fold too much. Right. Kim's going to uh, start jamming, and we're getting down to a point because now that the blinds have just gone up. Um, and he's got, what, uh, 14 bigs? Yeah, 14 bigs. bigs. So that we're getting to a point where both Jim's going to have to pick a spot where he's shoving or limping, and uh, Kim's going to start um, putting some pressure on him as well. Well, that's a decent flop. Yeah. Now I'd love to see a nine. <laughs> Maximum pain. Okay, he does check there. Um, he's hoping his opponent can catch up a little. I think now we probably have to yeah, bet small yep. and hope to get called. Nothing came for you, Jim. You needed you needed at least a jack or an eight there to get some sort of payment. And that's always the worst when you flop the nuts and just can't get a bunch of value. Okay, he's just gonna go for it. Um, I, I like it. Yep. Yeah, and Ace is gonna call there. you there. Right. Is it, it? I mean, it looks like a bluff more than anything. Well, Jim has definitely been fighting with the short stack here. It's it's kind of grinding away. Um. This might help him get a little healthier. Just a limp. I was going to say, against a raise, I think we can jam. Right. Or jam. Uh, against the limp, I don't really like a jam. Just yeah, kick it up a little bit. Awkward there. Um, what, size just, do you, what size do you like there if you're not going to jam? I would just make it two to two and a half. Yeah. Just try to see a flop. But then I guess, you know, you get out flop and then, then what? The King Queen suit is such a nice hand. You, it is. You hit a lot of flops. I think against a raise here, Jim should be jamming. I, I think I would. I think Pet back there could also do some jamming with King Jack. Heads up, it's such a strong hand. But we go to a flop um, now. Jim's open ender. He's got the back door flush. Kim's got the king and the jack. Um, I think I'd like to see a bet out of Jim there. Yeah. It's 
even if it's just a small block bet, because now we're in a kind of a tough spot. Yeah, we are. And that's one of the downfalls of playing shallow. He finds the call. Uh, Kim going to be the bully. She certainly can. Oh, I was hoping to see Kim just jam there. Yeah. That was an interesting spot for her. I think, she, you know, um, he looked a little bit stronger, like he had a little bit more of a piece of that, but because um, he had the open ender. But when he calls that bet, it, it looks like he's got a piece of it. So maybe she thinks he's going to be calling her jam there. But... That's true. Neither of them out that card. Nope. Well, and this is a limped pot, too. I think there's very few yep. aces involved here. Um, I've noticed Jim hasn't really been employing a limping strategy either. Now that he's gotten short, he limped a few times earlier, but once he got kind of short, he kind of stopped limping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually that's a little bit, if he's theory wise, it's a little bit of the opposite of what, what we might want to do. I think the shorter we right. get, the more we can start to employ some of those limping strategies. Stealing pots now. Yep. He was just down to 1100, so he's worked his way up to sort of 1500, 1600 here. So, yeah. Not, not bad. When you're getting that low, it's any pots you start winning is feels pretty good. Yeah. Going from 10 bigs back up to 20. That's playability. <clears throat> I don't think we can, well, I don't know. I mean, our king high is sometimes good here. Um, oh. That's interesting. That's, so, yeah. so we've got our gutter. We've got the king high, which is sometimes good. Um, I have to admit, I wasn't even thinking raise there um, because we are getting so low. But uh, that's an interesting raise. I like it, actually, as I think about it. I think it's uh, one of those we've been winning some pots, getting some bluffs through, and so now we're gaining some confidence. Yeah. Tides are kind of turning here just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. He's he's, And he's got top pair here, so I don't think he's going to be folding. Let's say I think we got a barrel again here. No. Nope. Shut down. It's going to... I think after the check back there, I think I'm going to go for a little value on the river yeah. if I'm Jim. Yeah, I think that might be right. Uh, and now he's he's you know he's he's working his way a little, little back to we started each started off with three thousand chips he's he was down to about eleven hundred he's now before the sand started he had two thousand so he's definitely worked his way back into you know he's still behind but he's not in dire shape like he kind right. of was starting to be a big pot and we could see a major change yep I love the raise there. Mm -hmm. Can't win them all, Jim. Even though you've been trying. So 
Kim explores the limping strategy here. Uh, I think Jim could have raised there. It's close. I don't hate the, the check, but... Yeah. Monotone board, I think. Monotone oh. board, top pair with the <laughs> gutter. Uh, okay. We're going to turn it into... Yeah, I don't mind here, turning your I... hand into a bluff. Yep, I like it. We've got a lot of equity. Uh, we often have the best hand. We need some protection. Um, it's an interesting kind of board to do that on. Just under half pot. I think, yep, we got to call at least one street. Mm -hmm. Not loving the turn if we're Jim. I think this probably goes check, check, maybe. Or did, did Kim's Kim going to keep wrapping the half, ace. A half pot bet there. That was really yeah. dangerously close to a half pot bet. Yeah, for, it was just for under. A very famous uh, cynic of the half pot bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give her some credit. It was like a 40, 43%. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was it was close. It was close. Must have been a misclick. <laughs> there we go. See, I knew I knew you had, had an eye for these things. Not a bad turn. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do we like that turn or not with our nine? I guess. Well, we like that. Yeah, <laughs> we, like yeah, that well, we like that. Now we want them to have diamonds. That's what, two quads now? Yeah, she said quads twice. Quads the hard way, too. Not the not the yeah. where you got the pair, but Ooh. oh Jim. You're about to find out some bad news. Yes. <laughs> Smile. Yeah. Cut speed. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's gonna give it a little bit of the. Okay. No, I thought he was gonna give a little bit of the Hollywood. Like, I have a decision to make here. And now we're in kind of back to where we started here. We're, we're right. around um, 11, 12 big blinds with as Jim. Yep, easy jam there from Pet Bet, easy fold. Now we should be seeing a lot more of that jam here from Jim. Yep. Oh, that's interesting. Did somebody call out the Brunson? Oh, a fold. <laughs> I figured that was going to be it. It was going to be a 10-10 queen flop. Let's see, that's close. This is really close for Jim. Um, I think Sudity what's, has to call. What's he got? He's got uh, 12 there. Yeah, twelve bigs. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think I'm I'm probably folding there too. Yeah, but, um, that is really close. Um, if I'm a little bit shorter, I'm I'm really giving that some serious thought about a call. I get the straight draw, two flush draws. Check back, rip it in there. 
I get real aggressive when I get short and hit a pair and I'm out of position. He's thinking about it. Yeah, I think if you, I mean, if you jam here, you're getting called by a 10 and that's it, or over pairs. But over pairs are just putting you all in pre flop. So most over cards are. So fours. I think that's just jam. There we go. And a fold. Now there's that king five. Jam it. Uh, it hits every time. <laughs> it does it? Yeah, it's math. Hits every time. Okay, so you like king five as I like the pocket fives too, huh? Yep. Oh, it, did, it, it did hit this time, but you didn't, not in the way she wanted. No, nah, the king's coming. <laughs> probably not. I'm thinking Jim just probably going to jam here. Yeah, yeah, I think he probably has to. And then how thin can you call? close it is close yeah I think you just have to fold but it's close I have in the back door flush draw oh there's that lint hmm. definitely I think that can raise here. You got a pair. You got a backdoor flush. Flush comes in. I don't think we're going to see. I mean, what do we be? <laughs> well, I was wrong. I was thinking we were not going to see another bet. It's so hard on those kind of boards when we're this short stack to get any kind of a bluff through, really. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I was thinking we, we might have just given up on the turn there. This is uh, no, nobody really has. I mean, this is really just uh, coming down. The blinds have just gone up again. But there's, um, you know, one time somebody has a hand, but the other one doesn't. Yeah, it's all been pretty kind of standard jam folds. Yep. Yeah. Now, I'm not as studied in heads up, but I don't know if I like the limping when Jim is so short from pet bet. Hmm. I, I would want to charge him to see flops. Like, yeah, if you get jammed on, you're kind of giving him more. But at the same time, I, I would think that would make him fold a lot higher frequency, too. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind having a little bit. I, there are some spots where I like to have um, a limping range. I think our, our opponent is going to start to get desperate and, and raise into us sometimes. But yeah, I think we want to be really careful in constructing that kind of a range. I think if I'm Kim here, I call. Yeah. I'm on the board. He could be bluffing over cards. Um, yeah, he could have jacks and eights that beat us, but I think there's a lot of over cards there as well that just like, hey, I don't think you have it, so I'm just going to jam, put the pressure on you.
people just hitting middle pair after middle pair. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot it's really of middle nice. Pair. It just puts you into the grinder, really. Jim's got his middle pair face. <laughs> my cheek a little bit. Jim, do you play live poker? Are you watching? Do you play live? If so, we play a cash game together. <laughs> yeah, he might. Yeah, I, I think I've, I've never seen him play live. I know, he's quite an accomplished online player, but uh, he may want to like uh, think Wear about some of the ways that he holds his head when he's got a marginal holding. Now the blinds are going up. These pots are going to swell a little bit, so yeah, there could be some yeah. swings. Well, and he's just, you know, just by winning a couple of pots there because the blinds are going up, he's gone from 10 big blinds to 15 big blinds. So he's right. definitely making up a little bit of ground here. Um, Gibber says he's a bit different than this from what I've seen him live. He's very social, LOL. <laughs> That's that what I heard. Me. I heard he was kind of the uh, the life of the party at, in the in, in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, WSOP tables. What was it, eight or nine Long Islands? Yeah, that, that was the that was the one night that was pretty legendary that I heard about. <laughs> like I, I I would uh I would not even have been able to uh, really even know what a poker chip was if I had no, not logged out. I would have been season. thinking I'm playing Omaha from how many cards <laughs> I was Omaha? I would have thought I would be playing Go Fish or something. I believe he won that night, though, which is uh, yeah, that that's what he said. Like, like he came out a winner. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that's possible. Um, but here we go. So we've got uh, basically queen high versus five high. Five high's got a decision. You can either fold or you make a move. You're never yep. smooth calling. Mm, this hand could get in. Gibber says he was also supplying the Long Islands. It helps to keep the competition happy. Uh, we do see the shove here from Jim. Is this going to be the hand that at least gets us running the equity, or is Kim going to? What do you think? What are you doing here with the ace? Fifteen bigs, ace five off. I I know normally that would be a fold. Heads up, though. He does run it. So this could be it here. This could be um, it. She is still ahead, hanging on. Needs a king or a jack, really, oh. and he is not going to find it. Not going to find it. So good game. That is going to wrap up um, that uh, matchup number two. Kim Petvet Kilroy, Fergie fifty six in the home games, uh, takes takes down this matchup. So good game to both of them. Good game to. To Jim, good game to Kim. Um, any thoughts on that matchup? It was a grinder. Yeah, think, it definitely uh, Jim, was. Jim, Jim kind of got down early, but found a way to grind yep. um, off of that short stack for quite a while. There wasn't, I think he got down kind of uh, earlier, so I don't think he was bluffing um, or I guess not as flashy of bluffs as what I thought we were going to see. Um, initially, but he definitely got a lot of bluffs through. Um, and Kim played solid, like just very solid, made a lot of good folds, I thought. 
Um, some of Jim's bets when he had it were a little high, I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I thought that was a very well played match. Yeah. And I think um, Kim had some interesting spots where we talked about, like, where she had she had the goods, the river came, and, and she was really trying to make a decision about what she was targeting. Was she targeting, like, the pr- more premium side to get more value, or was she targeting sort of like, you know, like fourth pair and betting smaller? But there were some interesting spots like that that came up. But, yeah, I thought it was very well played. And Jim really did show you, like, some of the – the tricks of the trade in terms of like hanging on with a short stack and really trying to, to um, make those last as long as you can really try to survive and pick a spot where you can actually double up. Um, And he had a good, he had a good opportunity there with the King Jack. It just, uh, you run that a bunch of times and Kim's going to win it, you know, a little bit more than he is, but uh, he doubles up there and it's a whole new game. So. Yeah. Yep. Very well said. Um, all right. Well, we're moving on to the four thirteen matchup, the one you dubbed "old school versus new school," um, and we've got uh, Rob versus uh, Kek Ke- Ke- Geek sixty five. Um, so again, a reminder: get your predictions in there. Let's get some channel points uh, wagered across the board. Who's going to win this matchup? Is it going to be old school? Is it going to be new school? Uh, and let us know what you think in the chat uh, the winning hand might be. Uh, I got to go back and look. Did anybody – I don't think anybody No, had, nobody had it. Nobody had it. Okay. So we did not have a winner again. But again, we had an ace. I think every matchup we've had so far in My Rec Madness has been – so hint, hint, for your guesses, I think every matchup has been won with an ace uh, in the hand. Um, maybe we'll break that streak with this, with this, uh, with this matchup, uh, who knows, but, um, but let's get those guesses in there. Let us know, uh, which hands you think are going to win, uh, who you think is going to win this matchup. And we are, yeah. And I think we're getting ready here for the matchup to start. So, all right, here we go. Here we go. Rob, Keck Geek, getting ready to go. Um, getting their matchup all set up. Um, w- what do you think here? This is kind of one of those interesting ones we've been thinking about. And we just I, get a fold right off the bat. <laughs> I think it's going to be a tough matchup, but I'm I'm going with experience. I think Rob's going to win. There you go, Rob. All right. But I don't think it's going to be easy. No, this is going to be one of those. I think that uh, whoever's going to win this is really going to earn it because I think Rob's just such a solid player. He's a tough player. Uh, he knows when to put the pressure on, when to back off. Um, and the times I've played with, with Jacob, uh, I have less experience playing with him, but, but the times I've played, he's just really, really um, solidly aggressive. He puts you into really tough corners and tough spots. So should be a really interesting one. Yep, and it looks like looks like there might be a little bit of something. Rob's grayed out here. Yeah, it looks like he went offline. Um, yeah, oh, it, but it looks it like happens. they've paused. They've I've paused seen it happen game, with so, uh, um, when he goes into. He might peel. have some connection issues here. Yeah, I think, um, uh, hopefully they get this resolved. He, for those of you who don't know, he borrows his internet from Taco Bell. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's back. They let him he's back. back. He's back. At least he's, he's, he's full color, at least. <laughs> I love the little whale uh, emoji he's got on his uh, on himself. Some people are pretty good with those. Oh, I think he's flashing. He's back. I see him moving. That's a good sign. He's trying to talk into his mic. Luckily, we've got somebody behind the scenes, and we're playing on poker now, so we can pause the game if Somebody has a little bit of uh, difficulty going on, but um, looks like we've started back up again. So I think his connection is back. We're good to go. Yeah, he just needed extra time to think. Right, right. 
That's a, that's what you pull, right? You pull the connect, the disconnect when you've got a tough decision. Although that was not really that hard. Yeah, of a that's decision, right. So if those ones are throwing Rob for loops, he might be in trouble. <laughs> I see some more ace guesses in the chat here. So if people are catching on. Uh, Evil Roy has gone on a limb and predicted pocket eights. So uh, good for him. Oh, and uh, Sadie has predicted pocket seven. So we've got uh, a couple and of course, in Poker, there. Poker Geek jumps in with his usual. He, he's, he's one of these times he might be right. He's, he's, he's always going with the garbage hands. He's going with two eight this time. That would be but awesome. It would be pretty awesome. I'm, not, I'm not if you were on the geek. other end of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I would love to see it. But I'm pulling for you, Poker Geek. Not much doing here. Who wants it more? Yeah. Yeah, when heads up, when we have an ace uh, and we see somebody sort of checking back to us, to I mean, we can, we can really... Um, Take advantage leverage, of that. yeah, leverage yeah. the pot. We have the best hand a lot in those kind of spots. And so Rob is open ended and he's going to uh, yep. raise here. And get that through. I like it. Yep. Especially in a limp pot. I mean, he's got so much equity, but there's so many hands that Jacob could have there to call with. He could really be getting a lot of value by raising there. It was unfortunate there was nothing going, but... right. Rob's going to come in with a small bet, and yeah. let's see what Cupcake does with bottom pair here. He's going to call once. He had the backdoor clubs as well. Right. Ooh. It goes big with it. I, I like it. That. was not expecting that. Yeah. Oh, and Rob gets his pocket tens full, too. But as we said, pocket tens are a beast to play. So yeah, very tricky. Interesting flop. That's a flop. All right, walk me through this. As Rob, I think we have to continue. Yep. Um, how are you approaching this as Kevin? I mean, we can go against a small bet. I'm raising. Yeah. I think I think you're raising against the small bet. Big bet, you're just going to call. Um, and are you now, raising... With as the with the open ender, I've always like when our opponent is really weighted toward aces, um, and we're raising with a hand where we're where we're really bluffing. Like um, when we get, I mean, we're never folding out an ace, right? Right. When we raise there, so we're just trying to fold out pretty much all the other sort of c betting nonsense that ha that right, play there, right? Yep. And I think the only tricky spot there is like when they do have an, like a strong ace, kind of like what Rob does. If you do raise, he is probably going to raise you again. Right. Um, and then you have to fold your draw. But like you said, when you do raise that draw, you're going to fold a lot of the sea betting nonsense. You might even fold out some sevens and fives. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can be played always. I think just against the small bet like that, though, I'm probably raising. Um, against a big bet, I would just flat all day. 
Uh-huh. But it looked like it was pretty much on a bent pool after that. But I, yeah. I that flop, there could have been some money that went in. Yeah, for sure. But it definitely did give, you know, it's given Rob a little bit of a cushion here in terms of the lead here. And Rob's going for that 3X sizing. Yeah, and note that uh, this is, like, yeah, he has suited connectors, but it's kind of one of the weaker hands that he's raised so far. And he went to a bigger sizing. I actually like that because it kind of hides your hand strength. Mm-hmm. Because he went 3X, he should just be betting here. I think Jacob has to call with a jack and then face a decision on the river. Ooh, he folds. I probably would call there and then was, face, a, face a tough decision. Dangerously close to a non pet fed approved bet. Uh, it was just under 50%. Oh, I do see pet bets in the chat. Um, in the chat. We, we, we do have one question for you. There was a hand in, in your matchup. Uh, uh, it wasn't quite half pot. It was like 47%. It was, it was, it was pretty really close. close. <laughs> really close. You, you threw out a half half potter there. Yeah. We caught it. It was. Uh, we decided it must have been a misclick. All right, and here's Rob uh, three betting. I think and when you three does bet. call. It's so tough when you get called, but I think as the aggressor, when the ace comes, you just have to continue to tell the yeah, story. I, I tend to agree. And he does. And and he I does. Don't see, I don't see if there's any way. Yeah. Note how fast these guys are playing, too. Yeah, Compared to the other two matches, they are playing fast. Most of my life is a misclick, says Poker Geek. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Okay, 47% <laughs> equals pet pet approved. That's good. Uh, that is pretty good. So this one got raised and then it went check, check. Can we get a lead here? Yeah, um, I like it. It's check. just one of those pots where nobody has anything. It just comes yeah. down to who wants it more. Jacob has ace king again. That's like three yeah, times he's had, already. He's, he's had that a couple times already, right? Ooh. Ooh. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, I love the sizing too. So you were you're cheering for a six there, right? For maximum carnage, is that? I uh, I was thinking about that. I was like, eh, do we want a six or like a nine? Would have been something that's interesting. Uh, okay. And then the ace. Mm, I Bob's think got that's... The, the queen of clubs, which is um, an interesting card to do this with. But I think if we actually want to bet with that, we might want to do that as a almost a check raise, I think. Yeah, a check raise. Or if we are going to lead, I think we go small. Yeah. Um, because then when they raise, we know exactly where we're at. Right. And as we see, like any bet there is just with ace king is going to be called there. Right, we're right. Targeting worse hands. Uh, it's going to be tough to get that through. The sizing, I, I just really didn't like the sizing. The sizing was really big. Yeah, in a sense, like to, you're taking yourself to, to value that town. Queen of clubs, right? He's trying right. to represent the flush there. Um, and I don't know if we had uh queen eight of clubs there um right i think i think that's a hand that we can probably safely check raise probably 
Yep. Ah. <laughs> gotcha. All right. So And this one's an interesting spot. Neither one has much of anything. Yeah, we're just going to get a fold from Rob here. I don't know if this is just gonna. It's just yeah, it is. I you think is anyone could anyone have made a move there? I, I think on the river if you're robbed there after it goes check 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 check. I think you can put a little bet out there and probably just win the pot, especially when a face guard comes. Yeah. But I will just say it again. These guys are playing fast. Mm -hmm. It's like watching high stakes poker. It's just bam, 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 bam. I like it. Yeah. I was watching, yeah. uh, you know, some of the the you know the, all the rage right now is the that hustler stream, and uh, some of them are playing so fast for such big amounts of money. It's 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 breathtaking. Yeah, I like uh, I like their like uh, five ten game that they were playing the other day where like the minimum open anybody was opening for was like 300 yeah. <laughs> i was like and they're all sitting 20 30k deep for plus yeah. i'm like yeah and a couple of them have like 300k game, like, like i'm I, i'm gonna i'm just gonna cover anybody who ever dreams about showing up here like man this is 510 like right. all right so rob gets top pair with the ace uh he's gonna Check it back. I would say let's raise. Yeah. Yeah. He said not today, Junior. Right. Boom. Bullets. Let's see an eight seven flop. Yeah. <laughs> You really do like your carnage. I just like seeing aces get cracked. I don't think he's. This is this is just going to be check fold. The typical aces winning the small pot. I think the typical aces is where it folds all the way around to you in the big blind with aces, and you get ah. no money. How many times have we seen that one? Yeah, that's that's not fun. Especially when you're short, you're like, yeah, this is my time. No, it's not. <laughs> and you haven't had a walk all day, right? You just you're right. With, yeah. Ooh, spicy with it. There's that 47 percenter. Mm -hmm. That fed approved. That's what I'm learning. <laughs> Ooh, this one could get spicy. Yeah. I think this is, yeah, this is, yeah, I was going to say this is going to be a call here. Ooh. Snap folds, too. Yep, yep. Well, he really didn't have any backdoor. Yeah, he had nothing. no pieces of it. He had no sort of hope, and, and the ace is pretty terrifying, so. And just robbed for just going for it 
three bet pot ace high. I got tens. I'm just gonna barrel again. Huh. Oh, uh, I think. I think you can go for a little value there. Yeah, I was, I was just going to ask. I mean, do we, do we, our four high flush? <laughs> Keck has got a nice, <laughs> he's like, I got away with one there. <laughs> we could look at his face. And these guys are just back and forth. I think the leech changed like six times. Yeah, it's been um, very fast play. Um, you know, some interesting three bots, three bet spots. Um, but yeah, really, really back and forth. Chips are moving. And what are they in level? Two? Yeah, level two. This is one, so like, you know, Rob has picked the, the 3X um, sizing, but as these blinds are going up, um, these are the kind of hands where it starts to sort of, you know, it's just tough when you have a hand like pocket fours or pocket sixes that are, you know, not that good. What about They're, fives? Oh, well, yeah, no, those are fine. But the, the <laughs> other ones, it, it just makes it, it's just, you're you're just having to give away too many blinds there. And I, I like a smaller open with some of those. I, I just like I a smaller agree. open in general um, as we get kind of a little bit lower. Yep, yep, totally agree. Um, and that that's not even just heads up, that's just in general. But I think small pairs heads up are, very tough to play. Yes, agreed. Um, they're they're actually harder to play in a full ring. They're easier to play because we're playing them for their set mining value, but we also are playing them because our opponent can't have some some of the hands that they can call us with heads up, right? Like like a hand like queen queen seven or queen six or something like that. When we have pocket fours. Um, Sometimes when a player where we might call us, we wouldn't think they'd have a seven or a six, right? But right. They, they they often do. Oh, let's talk about this here for a second here. We've got Rob with uh, the five. He's caught a piece of this. Um, and Jacob's got the larger piece of it. You were advocating earlier that you just like a flat. So we see it here. Ooh, it's going to get spicy. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh oh. That's a spicy meatball. You, you always like these train wrecks, so tell me what's going to happen. I think Jacob just has to put them all in, yeah. And I think Rob has to call it off. Because I think if he goes any smaller, he Rob just goes all in. Yep. And game over, but uh, wow, that's that's a tough one to tough way to end it. That's yeah. a tough one to end it. But uh, that's definitely the spiciest ending we've seen so uh, far. Um, I think we've ended our our streak of having a um, yeah. What was that? Queen seven. Queen seven. So that is, I, I doubt anyone has guessed the queen seven, but it certainly ended our ace ace high streak, which was kind of taking us over here. Um, oh, we had some congratulations. Close. Somebody was close with a Jack Seven. Oh, really? Was there a Jack Seven guess? Yeah. Wow. wow. Would have never uh, thunk it. Well, anyway, that, congratulations, Jacob. Uh, yeah. Keeps on winning. Um, pulls off the the. We were kind of running pretty 
you know, we've had some big upsets uh, um, this week. Uh, last week we ran a little bit more. The, the favorites kind of went through. And this week we've had already some pretty big upsets. We've had the 16 seed and now the 13 seed joining into the Elite Eight. Um, so uh, congratulations. Well played, Rob. Uh, that's a tough that's a tough ending hand for sure. Yeah, uh, very, very. I don't tough. know that that any that many of us are going to be able to get away with it. Um, uh, and so then uh, we're kind of turning our eyes on the final match of the night, uh, our nightcap matchup, the five twelve, the dangerous dangerous five twelve matchup where you really uh, feels like when we play actual March Madness, uh, the 12 seeds are often more favorites than the five seeds. Um, but hopefully for our friend Chad McBean's sake, that is not the case tonight. Uh, we have Chad McBean, the five seed, playing uh, Keith Brandt, Monkey System, who is uh, representing our 12 seed. So again, uh, we're going to have um, our predictions getting up there. We'd love to see um, you picking what you think the winning hand would be. We just uh, had our first matchup not end with an ace. So will that uh, continue or will we come back to some aces? I see Poker Geek has uh, entered in the deuce nine. It's going up one notch from the deuce eight. Um, and again, get your channel points in there. Start predicting who you think is going to win this fourth matchup as well. Our fourth matchup of the night and to complete our bracket uh, for the uh, elite eight coming up next week. Um, we will be turning our attention to that. So any, any predictions here, Tim, on this one? Uh, I think I'm going to go just purely by amount of study. I'm going to go with monkey. Going with monkey. Going monkey. Uh, it puts a lot of volume in study. Um, so I think he's going to have a little bit of an edge here. Like I said earlier, I think if it was a mixed game, I would pick Chad all day long. Um, a different variant, but no limit hold'em. Monkey puts in a lot of study. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Team McVean then. I, 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 I respect both these players, but yes, I feel like uh, he's going to rep both uh, the Canadian landscape as well as the podcast landscape, and and uh, them both proud. All right, looks like our players are getting ready here for our final matchup of the night. Uh, thanks again, everyone, to, for joining us, for being part of this. Uh, thanks again to Taylor uh, for organizing all this. And uh, thanks again to John Somsky, Poker Geek MN, for getting that awesome bracket on the website that we've all been able to fill in. Um, we're really lucky to have somebody as talented with the ones and zeros as Mr. Sobsky. Um, so here we go, right off the bat, uh, Keith Brandt Monkey System has ace queen on a nine, nine, 10 flop. This is not your favorite flop if you have ace queen. No, not at all. And I think Chad can definitely continue with his backdoor flush and he's kind of got some straight outs. When it goes check, check there, and it's tough because obviously we know if we're Chad, we're losing to any ace, we're losing to any king, any queen. Um, I would have liked to see a bigger bet. I think a lot of aces can call that sizing. Um, I didn't hate the lead, though. I just would have liked to see like a three-quarters pot bet. Mm-hmm. And it's still early, so if you do lose a chunk early on, it doesn't really matter as much because you're still going to be super deep. Right. This is one that could get a little interesting. It's one of those, you know, we're on the board, paired board. Right, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. Interesting. Yeah, I think when that club came, 
probably saves us. Yeah, poor Chad. Yeah. Just so tough there to continue. I mean, you you had a four. You've gotten over now. Two year four clubs came in. Full houses came in. A lot of weaker aces there. Let's see here. Got bottom pair for monkey. What do we do? I think we just bet. Yeah, I like betting. Um, She does and takes it down. They really are kind of feeling each other out, I yeah. think, is what we, we would call this stage of the match here. Yeah, a lot more feeling out in this one than the last match. Last match, they were just kind of guns a-blazing right off the bat, playing yep. fast, playing loose. This one might just be a grinder. A lot of aces so far. People yeah. picking them up. And here we see a little bit more aggression from Monkey. Another ace. Yep. Haven't really seen one yet, though, where either of them's really flopped much. No. Kind of just more of a who wants it more kind of pots. A lot of draw heavy boards, too. Mm hmm. That's the kind of board where Pet Fed has an eight. She was. She was yeah. quad hunting tonight in the earlier matchup. That's interesting. Um, there, that monkey snapped that off as fast as he did. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, ace high is going to be good there a good portion of the time. But, I mean, I think I would still find the call there. But I think it would take me a second to make that decision. Because, I mean, you're beat by every pair. Even if you had, right. you know, pocket twos there that check all the way down, you're still beat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, well, I guess he, he had him the whole way. Dean may be having a side conversation. It looks like. I think I think that's what got him his call there. Okay, like, <laughs> hey, I'm talking on the side. I'm just gonna bet one big blind here. My king high. Yeah. Okay, I'll call you queen high. Yeah, that's a good strategy. So just more more nothing boards here. Yeah. 
Where's all the spiciness of the last round? Yeah, we have not. I don't think anybody has really connected with a flop at all, really. Mm -mm. Which is kind of interesting. Here we go. So we got uh, kind of a weak top kick pair kicker with a middle pair for monkey. Now, that one didn't play out as sort of interesting as you might. Yeah, not as much as thought. I thought it was going to. I, I would have liked to see a bet on the end out of Chad. Um, you've got top pair. You can go for some value there. Um, it's mm -hmm. unlikely that he has hearts at that point, being that there was only one heart on the flop. Um, but you're going to get value out of, like, queens and other under pairs, even if you bet small. Um, but when you check, you just allow them to check it back like he did. He, he snap checked. Which you should. Right. I don't think you're ever going for value there with a second pair. No, no, I agree. All right, let's get a jack on the fly. <laughs> oh, All right. Oh. I called it. See, I, I, I'm always not cheering for the blood, but you, you're like totally cheering for the blood. And it's a, it's a two pair versus uh, a one pair one. So, yeah. Now we just need a four on the river. <laughs> or a jack. Hips of fly. Or a yeah, jack. A jack. jack or... Yeah, a jack would be really good. Yeah, I think now Chad can check. I would have liked to see some value there for Monkey on the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two pair. Yeah, agreed. And the way that the hand played out, I mean, you can definitely tell Chad had a jack. And was there a higher card than a seven? Or were no, they all low? They were all lower. Yeah, you they were top two. Top two, so you're not really afraid of much. I mean, he could have a set, I guess, but sets are so hard to hit heads up. Now, with Chad's ace eight here, I think I would have um, really liked to have seen uh, a three bet uh, pre. Yes. Um, yep. I think this is one of those those kinds of holdings heads up where out of position we can um, expand our three betting range. Uh, yeah, it might even be a three bet that we have in our normal um, play. Yeah, definitely. On position. Uh, yeah, definitely position dependent, but you will three bet it some of the times normally. Heads up, ace eight suited. That's a premium. Yeah. Okay, we get three bet with our ace 10, and we uh, have the monotone with the nut uh, flush draw. Um, this will be interesting to see how Monkey approaches this if he, as the three better. You went small. I would almost raise here if I'm Chad. He went small. Seems like a, just a continuation bet to me, usually. I, I just, especially with the nut blocker, I just love to put some money in the pot there. Wow, We've got all the draws in the world now. Yep. Can't fold. And we do get there. See if monkey finds one last barrel. No. Nope. Now what? What are we? What? What are we doing sizing wise? Um, are we targeting a king and going small? Are we targeting a worse spade and going a little bit bigger? I was gonna say I think we go bigger there because it's so likely that he could be barreling with a spade when it's a monotone board like that. Um, I think most Kings would barrel the flop, but on the turn start to slow down just because they have value. And it was a monotone board. Once we call, 
I think they can slow down a little bit. So I would I would go bigger there. I think trying to target a spade. Yeah. And these guys have kind of been low key back and forth too. I think the leads change. Uh, a few times as well. Yep. Kind of low key though. They're definitely, you know, they're they're playing pretty much every hand, which is I like to see. <laughs> yep, yep. That's what I like to see. Not much folding heads up. Like I said earlier, I mean, if you watch some of those high stake duels, they're not folding much at the. And Phil Helmuth went a little bit crazier than what you see Phil Helmuth do and just got there a lot. Unfortunate. <laughs> but, you know, that's what happens when you're the greatest poker player right, of all time right. to yes. ever live. Yes. <laughs> and when it, yeah. It, when it goes wrong, it's just because of these idiots. Yeah. These idiots call with their terrible rages. There you go. I like the raise there. Really puts Monkey in a tough spot. Oh, oof. Not so tough now. Now, you know, as Chad, this is an interesting spot because um, when Monkey calls there, huh. It's this is. That's that check back there. That would get me into trouble. Yep, I agree. It definitely would. Um, uh, I I don't hate the small block bet here because I when you either. get raised, you okay. Now I just fold. <laughs> it's such like a like you're small getting race. yeah, you're such getting a such a great race. price. <laughs> but I hate seeing that. Like, like does I'm an always, ace ever do this? I don't think so. Right? An yeah, ace never I'm does. always like uh like. When things like that happen, or even like three bets pre, and somebody goes like super small, I'm always like, like, what do you have that's so good that you want me to call that badly that you like went small? Like, if you're gonna if you're gonna raise me, whether it's pre or like there when you have the nuts on the end, like put in a raise and make me think about it. Like, but it's small like that. I'm like, uh, you know what? Like, he really wants a call fold. <laughs> Maybe that's a leak, but. Right. That's how I feel about those situations. Dean gets no action with his kings, but he does call with his queen three against the ace ten here. Oh, and he calls the C bet. Spicy, spicy. That's He's gotta go slow, for a steal. Slow monkey down. I think, yeah, I think if we're gonna call that, oh, I think we really need to go for a bet there. Yep. Yeah. When we make that float, um yeah, we're have targeting plans. that exact kind of hand, right? The the kind that that we that, can get to fold later. Yep. Oh. Now what do you do with your threes? Hmm. That's tough. So I really hate three betting those kind of hands and heads up. See, this is why you don't do it with threes, but you do it with fives. <laughs> he does get it through with his threes. Gets it through. Mm, pot mm. size bet. Yeah. That was interesting. Oh 
Oh boy, Chad does not want to see a six. No. Nope. That would be an interesting card. I mean, I kind of want to see a six, but <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Poker geek in the chat. Nobody plays fives. Oh, come on. Nobody plays fives. Well, that's why it's so revolutionary. Uh, I don't it's, know about that. It's the that. next I phase would of say, the game. I would say out of all of the pairs, I'll just say out of all the pairs, I hit the most sets with fives. Yeah. I will just... say that, and I will bet anybody – any kind of money on that, and we can pull up my stats and check. I will argue that all of the time. That's I don't know sense. why it is, but I definitely hit a lot of sets with fives. And I also get smoked by fives with my over pairs all the time. <laughs> it happened to me on stream the other night. I think I lost with kings or aces to fives like four different times. That <laughs> <laughs> accepted his so monkeys uh taking the lead back here um chad was kind of going well until a couple of those hands there that kind of tripped him up a bit yep yep it was mainly that threes hand that threes hand a lot of yep. money got exchanged there yeah it did All right, we got middle pair and spades. Um, I would have liked to have seen Chad probably see about that one as well. I will say, um, just so far, what I've noticed is Monkey is definitely being the aggressor, and Chad is playing a lot more passively. Mm. Kind of doing some more calling, uh, doing some more checking, whereas Monkey has been betting a lot. couple more folds coming in now yeah i think that queen seven was getting played about five ten minutes ago yeah that was a little i mean with the queen in our hand i mean it was a it was a bigger it was a 3x open and that probably was what um made monkey fold there but yeah i think we've seen him call with some of those kinds of holdings earlier All right, we get another float from Chad here. I'd like to see what we do with it here. Yeah, I think that just uh, takes yeah, it down. Yeah, that's, that's going to, yeah. It was, it I was call more that the uh, standard Brazilian move. <laughs> we bet small on the flop, get called, and then we go three quarters on the turn. Sorry if anybody in chat's Brazilian, but that is the patented Brazilian move. I thought the patented Brazilian move was to like five bet jam with Jack Deuce or something. Yes, that too. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of aggression coming from the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah, for sure. That's often like a decision maker for me, right? If I'm like, okay... This is one of those spots where I could call or I could not, and then I'll float over. Where are they from? Oh, Brazil. I call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually had Gareth watching my stream one night or one Sunday. He messages me. He's like, dude, why'd you just do that? I was like, oh, the guy was Brazilian. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a, I think it's that a, still <laughs> makes it a punt. <laughs> like, oh, I, I figured my ace 10 was good there. It was a king, queen, king, king, queen board. Yes, so <laughs> like I'm with you. I'm with you. If, uh, all things being equal, that is a that is a good tiebreaker.
All right, so uh, McVean has a gut shot here. And now Monkey's picked up some decent equity as well. Yep. Now he's got the double gutter. I don't know, Forexed. I don't know if I like that. We haven't seen that yet, and being that he had no. a decent hand, I'd like to just stick with the normal either two and a half or three X. Yeah, I'd be curious what, I mean, if he if he employs that with certain kind of holdings or... Or if uh, there's certain... any bluffs in there too. Yeah, right. If I was McBean here, I would definitely – I think I would start to raise more flopsy bets for Monkey because something that I'm noticing is Monkey in position is betting every flop. Yeah. Um, and there's sometimes when McBean's calling, sometimes he's folding, but um, sometimes when he's calling, he's calling quite light and not trying to steal the pot later. So if you're just going to call and then check it you know, and not try to steal later, you may as well just try to steal right then and there. I like that. Ooh, the raise with the queen deuce. And then you hit a deuce. What do you do now? now you're really cheering for your queen, right? Yeah, that would be spicy. <laughs> I mean, Chad probably has to fold this, but he does not there. Um, one of the things when we have these sort of gutters, um, when we have gutters with unders, um, they're a lot less appealing to me. Yeah. Um, and, and, and also just like in this situation, facing the bet, um, just from what I've seen out of monkey so far, when you're calling your gutter there, you know, no matter what the turn is, I, I don't think we've seen monkey really check too many turns. He's continued. Right. Right. So you know you're going to be facing another bet. So what do you right. do when that card doesn't come? And if we're going to continue with our gutter there, I think that's one that you were just talking about. That's that is an interesting candidate for a raise if we're going to, if we're going to continue with it because um, we can win it there. It's going to slow monkey down from that turn kind of bet. Um, when we hit it, it's it's a it's a it could pay us off big. So this is an interesting one. Are they yeah, this is good. There? Because we did see him three bet threes earlier. Yeah, and he does. Oh, three bet there we sixes. go. Um, I I rip wonder. I think Chad's just gonna rip this here. I would. And monkey's gonna fold? Question mark. Oh, he didn't rip it. He left a little behind. He does fold. And we're back to even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much anyway. Wow. And that's and that's what I'm talking about. Heads up, those three betting those smaller pairs that can get you into trouble quick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's see if he three bets He's it got, again. Got another chance. Does it again? I it think does this, it again. I think he can rip or call here. Ace five suited. Heads up. That's a premium. What are they at? Uh, so he's got like forty bigs. Probably a little too much to rip, but I think you can call. I would have called. I think I would have called too, but that's, I mean, I understand it too, though. Yep. Yep. I don't hate the full bet. Yeah. But that's interesting. I mean, monkey has not passed up any, 
of those tiny little pairs um, as three bets. So it's, um, it's definitely taking that as a strategy here. And, you know, I, like I said, I haven't studied too much heads up stuff. So I wonder if that's, you know, a typical play. Cause I know, I mean, he does do a lot of study. So maybe he studied up before entering the heads up match. Yeah. Um, Maybe that's a thing where you're supposed to be three betting those smaller pairs like that. Well, Evil Roy predicted pocket eights. Could we see something spicy here? It could get real spicy. Let me check back. I think he bet small enough here that I would probably call yeah. it the eights. This is a side call for me. Mm -hmm. If he goes bigger, I think we can fold, but he went just the right size. Yep. There's a flop. It's <laughs> got a piece. I don't know. If, is McVee, uh, he does, is he going to get himself into too much trouble here? I don't. Probably not. So. Now that another overcard rolled off. I didn't notice now that uh, McVee has the lead. Monkey's really slowed down on betting the turns. Mm. Um, but before when he had the lead, he was betting like all the turns. And again, I think McBean goes small enough here. Yeah, that wow, that's gonna happen. That's pretty sick, though. I I don't like the jam. Yeah, I'm just at I'm, all. I'm, I'm just I'm, calling there. I'm almost just floored by it because it's pretty gangster, know. but yeah, it is. But it's one of those situations and where you're probably, never getting called by worse. Right. Can we fold better? I guess is that's the question. I, I guess we probably can, right? There probably are some better. Better kings? I, I don't know. Can, can a weak ace? Was that going to fold out a weak ace? Maybe. It's, it's tough, maybe. I think maybe. it might. Heads I up. I think it might. I don't know. It's a big bet. Yeah, um, it's tough. It's certainly not something I would recommend doing very often, but uh, yeah. it's an interesting it's an interesting play. But you're absolutely right. If we get called, we're done. Um, but maybe we. But it's not a total disaster because I think we can get better to fold. And we have another lead change. Yeah. This has been really back and forth. There's been back some, and forth. Yeah. Um, some nice play on both sides here. Um, I like these kind of pots where we've got an open and a call and nobody's got anything. Let's see who, who wins this. Monkey's going to get after it. Yep. And now Chad's in a pickle. Um, he's going to call. I think he has to. Yep. Um, you don't love your jack here. Does he have a barrel? Third barrel here. He does. I think... <sighs> That's tough, but I think you have to call... The sizing's a little big, so I wouldn't hate a fold, but you're going to beat all of his bluffs. We're not and... really – do we ever think diamonds are here? It's more about um, maybe a three or a slow-paid ace. 
that we're I mean, we're really only, are we worried about a flush here? We can't be, I, right? No, because I think a flush checks back. Yeah. Because it's a double paired board. So if they have an ace or a three, you're beat. Right. So you're never value betting a flush. It's literally an ace, a three, or air. And just from the sheer fact of like the amount of aggression that monkey's been showing when he has the chip lead, I think I'm calling a jack there. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, I also That's... don't hate the fold because of the uh, size of the bet. That was a really interesting spot. I think it was, it was a, a really great follow through from monkey to mm -hmm. get that through. That's what they say. They say third barrel. That's the one that gets you paid. See that King Five coming home. <laughs> I think it gets it gets some value too. I'm probably calling that. Yeah, I think so with the suited nature of it. Yeah. Min rays. Starting to feel like the momentum has really started to go towards monkey. Yep. He's, he's hitting flops. Um, Chad's looking a little frustrated. Yeah, he's also... He Monkey's been doing well about putting Chad in some really awkward spots. Yep. Um, with that sizing. So he gets a click back raise and monkey calls. Uh, Chad's going to bet here. Um, and monkey's just okay, go for I, it. I hate, I, I do not like to go for it there. Um, you get a min click back. Usually that's for value. Um, you do have some value I would have liked to call. Um, um, because, and in, in, you know, like what, like, yeah, he was bluffing there, but generally, like, what is what is he then leading without a position for, I think it was, like, half pot. Right. It's one of those, like, okay, what do you do now then when he just jams? Yeah, yeah. Now you're out a massive pot. But it worked. It did work. And uh, now uh, McVean's down to about 10 big blinds, so he's really got to find a spot to double up or go home here. Yep. That deuce's hand we've been talking about all day. Going to jam it. No, yep. I figured he was going to jam it. Oh, boy. Well. Oof. McVean didn't catch any of this, otherwise, uh, this is what this is what you the only kind of flop you like with deuces. That's right. Did not catch up. Monkey is dying for Chad to put in just a little bit of chips. Oh. Not gonna see anymore. Yep. But oh no, now we got deuces versus ace All king. Right. This is gonna in. be um the the hand that at least is gonna run the equity. Let's see. Oh, there's an ace on the flop. So I think unless we see a deuce here, we're gonna have our last entry into the Marek Madness tournament. So we have our Elite Eight now. Congratulations, Monkey System. Great yep. game, Chad, as well. 
Um, and great game to everybody tonight, man. Yeah. That was, that was, those were some fun matches. Yes, great matches. Great really matches. Was. So we've we've got our final uh, Elite Eight uh, matchup, and every single lower seed won tonight. So way to go. You were cheering for the underdogs when we started the night, right? That's so, right. Like every single one came through. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going to happen. I don't know if, you know if everybody hasn't looked at the bracket yet. If you haven't, go take a look at that bracket. I know when I was trying to fill that thing out, I was like, wow. Like any match could be won by any person. I was like, this is tough. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's let's just before as we kind of wrap up the evening, let's just uh, quickly run through uh, the bracket that we've got left and talk about just really quickly the matchups we've got uh, coming up next week in the Elite Eight. Um, in our first matchup, we have Oslo Borger, Tron Vidar Stensby taking on Fergie 56, Kim Kilroy. That'll be a really good matchup. Uh, that's a that's a nice Elite Eight um, matchup. In the second matchup, we have Keck Geek 65, Jacob Kiki taking oh. on Monkey System, Keith Brandt. So that's that's going to be a good one. Yep, that's another really good one. Uh, in our third matchup, we have me, 5x5, 555, Chris Jones taking on website Mark, Mark Prashan. Um, and he's a sneaky good poker player. Everybody thinks about him as building websites, but uh, that'll be another one to tune into. Um, I am not going to take him lightly. I'll tell you that much. And then our final matchup in the Elite Eight will be uh, Kelly's one nine six two two zero Kelly Stork versus Poker Geek MN John Somsky. That'll round out our Elite Eight, uh, and the winners of that will obviously move on into our Final Four. So I am really looking forward to that next week. I'm looking forward to seeing some of these matchups, playing them myself. Um, Tim, what do you think? Any any kind of closing thoughts? Ah uh, man, that was there was a lot of tough spots i think that a lot of people got put in tonight um and a lot of the just really good overall play um yeah. there was you know a couple spots where i didn't agree with the bet sizing but i would say overall i thought everybody played very well um i didn't i didn't see as many monster bluffs as i would have liked uh, keith got a couple through at the end but um and a deuce nine one was really nice wasn't it yeah that was that was pretty nice um, but I mean, everybody just played awesome. Um, and I'm just going to say, I think, uh, just going to shout it out. The, uh, I think my matchup for the next round, the key matchup for me is going to be Jacob versus Keith. I yeah. think that match, because I think they both have very different play styles. Um, Jacob plays fast. Keith, Keith, you know, thinks, thinks it through a little bit more. Um, he likes to barrel. Jacob likes to barrel. I think that one, it's either going to last a long time or be over in like 10 minutes. <laughs> well, those are the kind of matchups you like to see, right? The ones that can just sort of like take a turn at any point or whatever. So it'll be fun to watch. Very, very fun to watch. So that'll be next week. Um, let's see. I think that's, I think that's, that's it for the night. So, uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate all you. Thanks for taking part in my rec madness and we will see you next week for the elite eight. See you guys. Peace.